In 10.6, we're learning about the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle. So first, we're going to start with learning how to make Pascal's triangle. You start with a 1 at the top, and then 1's in the next row. Okay, the outsides are always going to be 1's. The way you get inside numbers is by adding the numbers above it. So this blank spot here, above it to the left and right, we see we see one and one. So one plus one makes two. So we put a two here. Okay, always ones on the outside. Okay, I see a 1 and a 2 next to each other, so underneath that should be a 3. I see a 2 and a 1 next to each other, so underneath that in the middle should be a 3. 1's on the outside. 1 plus 3 makes 4. 3 plus 3 makes 6. 3 plus 1 makes 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5. Alright, we won't fill in this whole thing. Let's do a few more rows. 1 plus 5 makes 6, 5 plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 5 is 15, 5 plus 1 is 6. 6 and 15 make 21. 15 and 20 make 35. 20 and 15 make 35. 15 and 6 make 21. 6 and 1 make 7. Alright, so a few things I want you guys to notice. Also, let me tell you how the rows work. The top is row 0, and then it goes from there. Row 1, row 2, so one thing I want you to notice is that every row is symmetrical. Look at row 3, for example. It starts with 1, 3, and ends with 3, 1. Row 5 starts with 1, 5, 10, ends with 10, 5, 1. So every row is symmetrical. Another thing I want you to notice is that row 4 starts with 1, 4. Row 7 starts with 1, 7. So the row will tell you what the second number is. The first number is always going to be a 1. The row will tell you what the second number should be. Okay, I think that's enough for now. We don't need to fill in the whole thing. So now we need to talk about what is this used for. Pascal's triangle is used for binomial expansion. So on number one, we have a binomial. X plus Y is a binomial because there are two terms. The exponent is four, so we're going to expand that. So looking at row 4 of Pascal's triangle, we see that the numbers are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. These are going to serve as our coefficients. So we're going to use the 1 first. Okay, so the first term is x. You're going to start with 4x's and 0 y's. Okay? The second coefficient is going to be a 4 from Pascal's triangle. The amount of x's is going to go down by 1. The amount of y's is going to go up by 1. Okay, our next coefficient is the 6. The number of x's is going down, so it was 4. Then it was 3. Now it's 2. The number of y's is going up. So from 0 to 1, now 2. Notice the total is always 4.
the total of the exponents is always whatever the exponent is on the binomial. Right, so we've already used 1, 4, and 6. Now we're back to 4. 4. We, wanna, we want x to go down, so that's 1. We want y to go up. And our last coefficient is 1. We don't want any x's. We want 4 y's. So let's simplify. 1x to the 4th times y to the 0 is just x to the 4th plus 4x to the third y plus 6x squared y squared plus 4x I don't need to write the exponent of 1 and then I don't need the 1 x to the 0 is also 1 so all we need in the last term is y to the fourth That might seem tedious, but it's a lot faster than foiling over and over and over and over. Okay, number two is a little different because it is subtraction. So the subtraction will cause this to alternate. So it'll go from positive to negative, back to positive, back to negative. So it always starts positive. So we're going to use the same numbers that we did because the exponent is 4 again. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we're going to start with a 1, and then 4 of these, and 0 of these. So 0, negative 2y's, plus 4. Now we want 3 of these x's, and 1 of these negative 2y's. Next coefficient is 6, 2x's, and 2 of these. Plus 4, 1x, and 3 of these. And then finally, 1, we don't want any x's, and we want 4, 4 of those. So let's simplify, x to the 4th, plus, actually not plus, it's going to be minus, because we're going to have 4 times negative 2 makes negative 8. Minus 8x cubed y. So then the next one is going to be plus because it always alternates plus. 6 times negative 2 squared is 6 times 4. So plus 24x squared y squared. Now we're going to have 4 times negative 2 to the third. We know it's going to be subtraction. So 4, and then negative 2 cubed is negative 8, so minus 32 xy cubed. And then 1 times x to the 0 is just 1. We know it's going to be plus. Negative 2, we have 4 of those, so 16y to the 4th. Number three, the coefficients we want, we want to use row three from Pascal's triangle. So that's one, three, three, one. This one has fractions, so it might be a little tougher. So we start with one, A, we want three of these. And we want zero of those plus three. The number of A's is down to two. And we want one of these plus, and we need another three, one A. One 
one A and two of these. And then we're going to finish with one. We don't want any A's. And we want three of those. Okay, simplifying, we get A to the third. And whenever the binomial has subtraction, it's going to alternate. So minus, we have 3 times 1 half. So negative 3 over 2, a squared, b. Next one has to be plus 3 times 1 half squared. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. So this is going to make 3 fourths. And we have 1a, b squared. And then last one has to be minus. We have 1, and then negative 1 half to the third is negative 1 eighth. No a's, b to the third. Notice the total of the exponents is always going to be 3. We had a cubed. Then we add a squared, b to the first, a to the first, b squared, and b cubed. Total in every term is always 3. For number 4, we want the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So that is 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So we're going to start with a 1. We want 5 of these and 0 of the negative 3s. And our next coefficient is 5. We want 4 of these and 1 of the negative 3s. Next coefficient is 10. Radical x, we want 3 of those, and we want 2 of the negative 3s. We need another coefficient of 10. 2 of these, 3 of these. 2 of the rad x's, 3 of the negative 3's. Rad x, now we're down to 1. The amount of negative 3's is up to 4. The total exponent always being 5. And our last coefficient is 1. We don't want any rad x's. And we want 5 of the negative 3's. Okay, remember that radical x is an exponent of half. So if we have 5 halves, that makes 2 and a half. So this first term is going to become x squared radical x. Okay, this has to alternate, so I know the next one's going to be negative. We have 5 times negative 3 makes negative 15. So 4 halves makes 2. So x squared plus. So now we have negative 3 squared is 9 times the 10 makes 90. And we have 1 and a half x's. So we have a complete x and 1 radical x left over. Two radical x's, radical x times radical x makes x. So if we have three, we have x times radical x. Okay, the next one, negative three times negative three times negative three is negative 27 times 10 makes negative 270. Radical x times radical x just makes x. Okay, for the next one, negative 3 to the 4th is 81. 
81 times 5 is 405. So 405 radical x. And then for the last one, the 1 doesn't really do anything. Radical x to the 0 is also 1. So we're left with negative. 3 to the 5th is 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. So there is a way to do binomial expansion without Pascal's triangle, and that's by using the binomial theorem. So to do the binomial theorem, you'll need to know how to do n choose r. So let me teach you the formula for n choose r. n choose r equals n factorial over r factorial and then n minus r factorial. Okay, so what does the exclamation point mean? That means that you're multiplying that number, and then you're doing a countdown and multiplying every integer below that. So for example, 3 factorial equals 6. 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 6. So 4 factorial would equal 24, because 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which makes 24. So that's what the exclamation point means. Okay, so the way this works, let's do number 5. We're going to expand the binomial 3a minus 2b to the third. So we're going to start with the exponent is your n. So n is 3. So we're going to do 3, choose, and you're always going to start with 0. 3, choose 0, and then just what we did with the Pascal triangle. So the 3, choose 0 is just telling me what the coefficient is going to be, and now I don't have to do Pascal's triangle. This is uh, beneficial when the exponent is really high. Not so much when the exponent is 3. So we want 3 of these, and we want none of those. So we're pretending that we don't know that Pascal's triangle is, is telling us that the coefficients are going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, so pretending we don't know what the next coefficient is, we're going to do 3, C, 1. So you start with 3c0, then 3c1, then 3c2. Start at 0 and count up. The amount of 3as goes down by 1. The amount of negative 2bs goes up by 1. Okay, so next we have 3, choose 2, 3a, we only have one of those, negative 2b, we have two of these, and then we finish with 3c. I don't want any of the 3as, so I'm not even going to bother writing it, and I want three of those. Okay, 3C0 is 1. The C stands for either combination or some people say it means choose. 3C0. is basically 3 factorial over 0 factorial, 3 factorial. 0 factorial just has a special rule. 0 factorial is 1. Doesn't really, I don't really have a logical explanation for that. Just remember 0 factorial is 1. So 3 factorial over 3 factorial equals 1. Think of it this way. 3 choose 0 is basically asking, 
If you have three people, how many different ways can you choose zero of them? Well, there's only one way to choose zero people. You just don't choose anybody. So 3C0 is 1. 3A to the third is 27. So I'm going to get rid of the 1. Three a to the third is twenty seven a to the third plus. Okay, and I said I'm gonna get rid of this one because we don't need it. Three c one. If you have three people, how many ways can you choose one person? Well, there's three ways. So we have three times nine a squared times negative two b. Plus, so if you have three people, how many different ways can you choose two of them? Well, choosing two people out of three is like choosing one to leave out. So there's three ways. Three times 3a times 4b squared. If you have three people, how many different ways can you choose three of them? Well, there's only one way to choose everybody. So we have 1, and then negative 2b to the third is negative 8b to the third. So simplifying, 27a to the third minus, looks like 54a squared b. plus 9 times 4 is 36 ab squared minus 8b to the third. So that problem was probably or would have probably been easier using Pascal's triangle. So I like using binomial theorem when the exponent is high and or if you're only finding one term. So if you're finding one term or if the exponent is high or both, then I think the binomial theorem is better. So here we have, we want the sixth term and we have a high exponent of 7. So we know it's going to be 7c something to start. Okay, so remember, the first term is 7c0. The second term is 7c1. So using that logic, the sixth term has to be 7c, and then one lower than that is 5. So it's going to be 7c5. And we want some amount of tens, I'll fill in the exponent later, and some amount of negative 3t. Okay, so remember, the total of these exponents has to be 7. And we always started with 0 of the second one. So if the first term had 0 of them, the sixth term will have 5 of them. So this exponent, or that number, will always be the exponent on the second term. So if we have five of those, then we need two of these. And now we could either do this on the calculator, 7c5, or do it in our head. All right, I'm going to show my work above. So I want 7 factorial over 5 factorial. And 7 minus 5 is 2. Okay. So it's actually pretty easy to do because you can, you can cross most of it out. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So this can cross that out, and we're left with 42 divided by 2, which equals 21. 
So this is going to become 21 times 100 times negative 3 to the fifth. 243, negative 243. Okay, so 21 times 100 times negative 243 is negative 5. 510,300 t to the fifth for this next one we want the fourth term the exponent is 8 so it's going to be 8c remember the first term is 8c0 the second term is 8c1 the third term is 8c2, so the fourth term will be 8c3. 8c3 The 3 is the exponent for the second term. The total has to be 8, so the j needs an exponent of 5. Okay, 8c3. 8c3 is 8 factorial over 5 factorial 3 factorial. I might have messed up the order there, but as long as I have both, it's fine. So on top, I'm going to cancel out the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on top. So I got rid of the 5 factorial on the bottom, and I got rid of the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on top. Now 3 times 2 times 1 just equals 6. So 8c3 is equal to 56, 8 times 7. Two to the third is 8, so this is 8k to the third. 56 times 8 is 400 plus 48, 448. J to the fifth, k to the third. On number 8, we want the 7th term of this binomial, so the exponent is 11, so it's going to be 11c, and because it's the 7th term, we go 1 down, so 11c6, 5x, 2, the 6 goes with the 2nd term, the total has to be 11, so 5x gets a 5. All right, so I think now is a good time to teach you how to do this on the calculator. So if you want 11C6, first thing you need to do is type 11 on your calculator. So once you've typed in the 11, then you're going to find the C. So 11, then go to Math, then scroll over to PRB, Probability. The third option is NCR, so choose the third option. And now type the 6. So remember to type the 11 first, then go to NCR, and then type the second number, and hit enter. And you get that 11C6 is 462. We want to multiply that by whatever 5 to the 5th is. So 5 to the 5th is 3125. And negative 2 to the 6th is... One, or 64, positive 64. So we multiply all that out. And we get 9, 2, 4, 0, 0. Looks like five zeros in a row. 3, 4, 5. And now let's put the commas in. 92. And that's a zero. Let me make that zero neater. Ninety-two million four hundred thousand, and let's not forget the variable x to the fifth. Okay, for the last one, they don't tell us which term exactly. They don't tell us whether it's the third or fourth or 
fifth term. So we know it's going to be 7c something. I'll fill that in later. We don't know how many of these we want yet. We don't know how many of these we want yet. Okay, but we know that we want it to make x squared. So the only way for this to become x squared is if this one is squared. The total has to be 7, so negative y needs an exponent of 5 to make the total 7. And then for the, for the r value, you just choose the second exponent. It actually doesn't matter if you choose 2 or 5, because 7c5 and 7c2 are equal. Think of it this way. If you have seven people and you want to choose two of them, that's the same as if you have seven people and you want to choose five to leave out. So it's going to be the same value. So 7C5 on the calculator is 21. And you could do it by hand as well. I'll show the work. 7 factorial, 5 factorial, 2 factorial. So that would just be 7 times 6. The 1 through 5 would cancel out top and bottom. 7 times 6 divided by 2 times 1. That is 42 divided by 2, or 21. So 21 times 4x squared times negative y to the 5th. That makes negative 84x squared y to the 5th.